Hello, my beautiful Geminis. Welcome back to Queen Cup Tarot. I am just shuffling up right now, catching a vibe, getting ready to do your March 2020 tarot readings. For those that are new, it's a privilege and honor. Welcome. Please like, share, subscribe. It's much appreciated. But for those that are returning, OMG, over 100,000 subscribers, eh? What? You guys are tripping me out. It's crazy. I just, it's still kind of, I'm very humbled by it. It still trips me out. You know what I mean? But I'm just very grateful to be able to connect and resonate with so many of you when I started this channel feeling like I didn't resonate with anyone. Okay, spiritually, I just felt very alone. And it's amazing. You guys have changed my life exponentially. Okay, so whatever, that's why I give you my all. I really try to <laughs> just give you me because, you know, it's the least I can do. Anyways, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. All right, um, all, for all those that work with me regularly in the personal readings. I love you guys. That work is everything to me. The work that we do regularly is everything to me. For those that have booked personal readings with me, over a, almost a thousand live personal readings in a year and a half. I'm pretty sure that's the number. I think it was actually like 14 months. Either way, it doesn't even matter. It's just amazing. Okay. Thank you guys um, for picking me. It's an honor to read for you guys one-on-one -on, -one on this platform. It doesn't even matter, right? So if you want to book personal readings with me, that's cool. I'm still accepting them. Like you guys know, that's my passion. Okay. I love doing the personal readings. So if you want to book a personal reading with me, just see below my email address, just email me and I will send you a link for the calendar. Okay. Um, and for those that, um, want ac access to the daily and weekly content, um, that's for members only. I offer that content over on Patreon, a little congregation, a high priest, high priest, this is you get me. So if you want to, um, be a part of that, just join the, the Patreon, but just wait till the first of March, just so that you're not double billed. All right, Gemini. Um, you guys, for those that timestamp the reading, I know it's, I said it a little bit late, but for those that timestamp the reading prior to the prayer, please continue to do so. And for those that are new, if you want to bypass the intro, just see below the timestamp, okay, um, to go right to the prayer. I did want to shout out Anna Delano, a fellow Patreon, uh, High Priestess, um, Angel Gang Gang. She just launched, um, gifted me a deck, her new deck that she's launching, Tarot of Desires by Anna Galano. The link for her deck to pre-order it will be below. I'm using it for all the monthlies. Um, people really like it. I love it. It's very like avant-garde and abstract and, you know, it's just, and it's sexy, it's hot. Like, it's just a beautiful deck. So thank you, Anna. I don't even know if she's a Gemini, but thank you. I love my new deck and I know the collective will love it too. All right, so get your decks ASAP, guys. Okay, we're gonna get into prayer and get right into this spread. Let's see what March has for my beautiful Geminis, okay? Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, guardian angels, thank you for rising me up out of my bed this morning and thank you for connecting me with the collective every day. Right now in particular, please allow me to communicate clearly with the collective, the messages that are in their greatest good, surrounding the collective of Gemini, surrounding their material abundance, sustenance, the relationships closest to them, their personal ascension and development and any other messages that you deem worthy at this time. Thank you, Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, guardian angels for everything you do. For me, Gemini, the collective, all the healing energy, support, love, guidance, and protection. We are nothing without this, and we are nothing without you. So glory be to the Most High forever and ever. Amen. Hmm. Some of my Geminis are like me, and they're all in their feels. You've been all in your feels, eh? You've been, <laughs> you've been all in your feels, eh? Some of you have been all in your feels. Some of you are about to be all in your feels. But I personally think that some of you guys are just dealing with some unavoid uh, unavoidable emotions that I think some of you want to deal with privately. So I see some of you kind of pulling back and being a little bit in hermit mode, dark night, whatever you want to call it. And I just think it's because I think you want privacy to deal with and uncover the emotions that you are, that are bubbling up at this time. There's the successful completion of something so I feel like there's something that you had suppressed for a really, really long time that was stopping you from being able to move forward, okay, and, and successfully complete an old karmic cycle. These emotions, however, they've been triggered because some of you have been triggered by other people. Some of you, this is just happening. The divine triggered this within yourself, okay? But these emotions have to come up now. This 
is in direct conflict. This five of pentacles is in direct conflict with the chariot. So these emotions that are being bubbled up, dealt with, are going to get you out of this fetal position and mount you in your chariot so that you can finally start moving forward. Some of you, there's certain pain that stops you from wanting to explore. There are things you guys have went through that stopped you from wanting to explore, go out and explore because you were afraid. You felt, some of you feel very alone in this world. See that? The world and the five of pentacles feeling very, very alone in this world. Some of you are going to meet somebody who feels just as lonely as you do. They're just not as depressed about it. <laughs> so they might help pull you out and say, hey, look, you know, it's not so bad. Two lonely souls getting in their chariot and hauling ass. That's not too bad. Okay. Um, yeah, I see some of you guys dealing with the tail end of a karmic cycle and what successfully completing it are all of these emotions that you suppressed, all of the compassion that you needed to give to yourself because of what you've been through. Some of you, you some of you don't even, we're not even looking like the five, we are, we're all trying to get to the 10 of pentacles. This is the five. Some of you were not seeing past it. And it was because this emotional blockage here, some of you were not open to receive support, help from people. Some of you were invited to go and have experiences and you didn't even take them. Some of you, some of you have the opposite of a fear of missing out, <laughs> you know, like FOMO, fear of missing out. Like some of you are the complete opposite. <laughs> missing out of what? I hear Gemini saying, the fuck out of here. Like, yeah, some of you are really in this. <laughs> and I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you guys. Okay. Cause listen, I'm, a cancer um, sun. So I know all about the purging of these emotions, but I do them a little bit more willingly, especially than the air and the fire signs, which is more masculine energy. So I feel like something prompted you to deal with emotions that you had suppressed and had ignored for a long time, trying to pretend that somebody didn't hurt you and, it, and you were hurt, trying to pretend that you did not feel alone or vulnerable and you did, trying to pretend it was like this really hard shell. Some of you had to suppress emotions just to survive because if you dealt with those emotions, you would have literally curled up in the fetal position. This wouldn't have been a spiritual, you know, metaphysical, uh, like a whatever you call it. It would be a, like a fact. You would have literally been in the fetal position. Like, anyway. Some of you guys are balancing out your feelings for good or for bad. You're acknowledging the good and the bad feelings. Some of you are literally just purging some loss that you had from anywhere in the past five years. Anywhere, any, I can't even say that because for some of you, this was in your childhood. So it could have been 20 years ago. Things that you did not, like, because I was tapping into some of you guys were going to therapy or were seeing mentors and shit. Certain things got revealed to you about what your blockages were, about why you couldn't move forward. Because with the chariot, if these dogs are not facing or these horses aren't facing the same direction, the chariot can't move forward. One dog can't be looking right. The other one can't be left looking left. They can't be looking at each other. They need to be looking in the direction that they're going. And they have to be on the same page for light and for dark. The shadow and the higher self need to be on the same page in order to feel confident about, confident enough about pulling you and pushing you forward to the next destination. So that's what I'm saying. This is the opposite of this. So some of you are purging emotions that stop you from wanting to embark in your future timeline. Some of you don't give a fuck about the future. Some of you are like, how can I care about the future when I'm dealing with these emotions? Do you know what I've just been through? Yeah, I get that. Like, I get that. So that's what this is. This is what's purging up. It's everything that you suppressed, right? Some of you... Some of you took it, I'm hearing taking it on the chin. Some of you guys took it on the fucking chin. Some of you didn't shed a tear over some shit. Some of you guys lost people. And because you had to plan the funeral, because of how you didn't even cry when some of you, your nearest and dearest passed away, you didn't even get to mourn certain things. Cer certain people don't understand how lonely you feel now that somebody's gone. Some of you are suppressing the depression that you're feeling 
the loneliness that you're feeling, the vulnerability. Some of you are terrified. Some of you feel like you're out in the elements. I'm hearing naked and afraid. Some of you guys are feeling naked and afraid, which just means very vulnerable, like you're exposed to the elements. You're not equipped for the elements. This is these emotions that created that, that dialogue, that, that, that illusion that nothing is safe, that you're alone, that you can't trust anyone, and that there's nowhere to go forward to, so you might as well sit there and cry and obsess over the past as if the past was, as if your life has already been lived. Some of you look at your life experience as you've already lived. You guys don't have any vision for the future because this is the chariot card, but I also see this as Gemini because here are the two faces, right? And Gemini is right before Cancer. This is the card of Cancer. So I, I feel Gemini energy when I see the chariot just as much as I see Cancerian energy, right? So this is you balancing those aspects of yourself. People talk about the different sides of Gemini. That, dual, that dualistic nature is very air energy. You're needing to learn how to live that in its, in its entirety, right? Because some of you only feel comfortable living out certain versions of yourself with certain people or in certain environments when essentially you're consolidating your personality, who you are, which was revealed to you in your death and rebirth process. But we're now going through the rebirth process, which is the reintegration of oneself, right? So yeah, I'm seeing this balance in you where you have the two faces, but nobody's surprised. You have, you can flip it up quick, but nobody's shocked. Why? Because you presented yourself whole, it, 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 completely. It's like, here are the faces instead of hiding certain aspects, certain sides, certain faces of you, Gemini, in order to be accepted, putting your best face forward, not the best foot forward, your best face forward. Both of your faces are just as good. There's this need to gain acceptance from all aspects of you. And the only way you can do that is if you integrate, you put to market all parts of you and then allow yourself to be accepted. Because some of you are afraid, some of you are in integration, meaning you are on par. You've done the death part process. You've gone through the he healing of the Bordeaux. And now, just in line with spring, you guys are rebutting. You're birthing. You're birthing. And um, you're rebirthing yourself. It's funny because I'm getting, I'm getting other people looking at you in spring at the rebirth. Certain people are going to feel differently about your metamorphosis, about the changes that you're making. Because listen, I know this is kind of, it feels like I'm all over the place. I'm feeling the air energy because now I'm looking at the queen of cups and I'm like, well, she's feeling depressed. Like some of you are not here yet, but that's where you're going. You're integrating yourself. There's emotions you have to purge that are creating negative and illusionary dialogues. It's almost like it doesn't matter. Whoa, this is so much. I see some of you guys looking at the future and you can see only the past. It's an illusion. I'm getting so many messages now. So I'm going to just try to ground myself, shuffle up and see what else we get. All right. See what's really going on. Yeah, I see you guys. And I've seen this a lot. These are these heart chakra cracking open. It's these awakenings, this heart chakra shit. This is the divine cracking people open like cantaloupes. The divine doesn't, it, it, there's a sense of like, we got to go. Like, let, let, let's, let's go. So these emotions that some of you were very stubborn, because the five of pentacles to me can be a very stubborn energy, right? So it's it, it depends. This is initially, this can initially be... Many people can put you out in the cold or project this feeling onto you or whatever, but the perpetuation of this is very stubborn. This is somebody who refuses to come out of the victim mentality. Some of you are being very stubborn, and again, and now it's gone. Like I just the the your messages are coming in like gusts of wind. You know how you feel the breeze and then it's gone. Like if you're really really hot, you know, because I you'll pay attention to the wind and air when you're really, really hot or really, really cold, because then you can feel every gust of wind. And I'm just, I'm feeling these messages coming in as gusts of wind. So then I feel it 
And then the wind's gone. And then I'm like, what, what were we talking about? <laughs> I'm serious. I don't know why it's coming like this. It wasn't like that for Aquarius. I mean, I verbally abused Aquarius. I don't know why I've been so like aggressive with Aquarius. I don't know why. <laughs> but Aqu Aquarius, Aquarius loves me same way. <laughs> I love Aquarius. They're the ones that really built up this channel. Before any sign ever hopped on to Queen Cup Tarot, it was Aquarius. And I don't even have Aquarius predominantly in my chart. It was so weird. And even to this day, Aquarius is still one of the highest viewed fucking videos or signs. Anyway, shout out to Aquarius gang. Um, the sun under the chariot. This is clarity about what was stopping you from moving forward. And it had to do with you thinking it wasn't safe, you not being emotionally open and you not trusting. Whatever you had gone through, it was, it took a, it, it was a hit. Yes, it's over. Yes, that cycle's done. But this is like, this is like aftermath. This is, and it's fucked up because for some of you, this shit is so suppressed. This didn't happen recently. Some of you are purging emotions of things that didn't happen recently. They happened years ago. Some of you from childhood shit, and you're wondering why you're purging all of this shit. Some of you, your children reaches a certain age and you have a complete breakdown. It's because of whatever occurred to you at that same age. Some of you are getting your heart chakra cracked open because you suppress certain things from your childhood and it's being awakened because your child has reached that certain age and you're looking at your pick me like, oh my God, you're me. And now you're reflecting, you can remember you at that age and it's revealing certain things that went down. So either way, it's just like, I'm seeing all of these suppressed emotions bubbling up. Don't worry. Once this gets purged out of you, you'll be sitting pretty emotionally. You'll be a lot more emotionally stable. And the best part is you will be open again. Whatever the divine is carving out of you, it's, it's, it's because you're not open. That's why you're not moving forward. You're not open to people. You're not open to experience. Some of you, this is what I'm getting for a group of you. This is like, you're, you're trying, you're going to God saying, why can't I move forward? Why can't I get out of this? And the divine is saying, because we got to get this out. Because you still feel this way. Because this still hurts. And that pain causes a reality and an, uh, an illusion that isn't truly reality. And you've been living by that illusion, thinking the world is a worse place than it is. Thinking love isn't safe thinking you'll never have enough and that suffering is just a part of your fucking DNA and it's not. This is going to be very tough for some of you Geminis, but it's worth it. Some of you have been holding on to this shit, whatever. I can feel it in the cards. I can feel it in my hand. Some of you have been holding on to this shit for so fucking long. Some of you, this is just current energies. Whatever occurred that you're purging out might have occurred recently. But for others of you, it's just you getting washed with the past. Like Mercury retrograde, you know, the us tarot readers have you thinking it's some fucking karmic coming back. It could be a, a flood of fucking childhood memories, man, that evoke all these emotions that you suppressed. And it's fine because now once you deal with these, these emotions, you'll remember who you were before you ever got dealt with like that, hurt like that, before you ever felt this way. There was a time before you ever felt this way, you know? Okay. Your reading's kind of like intense. I feel like some of you are trying to make me cry. Like I can, I feel like some of you are trying to make me feel the way you're feeling. You're like, Destiny, no, 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 you don't understand. That's what some of you are telling me. No, 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 you don't understand. Don't let the way I'm talking to you make you think I don't understand. But I'm trying to help you. I can't curl up on the floor with you and do that. I can't. Angel gang gang, I have to get help you get out of there and sit on your throne. I have to, I have to help you get here, not stay here. So I get you, I feel you. But this, I know it feels like you'll never get out of it. Some of you feel like you'll never get out of this dark night and you will. This is like, holy shit, this is intense. For some of you, there was an ending or a breakup that 
you're not just mourning the breaking up of a relationship. You're mourning the entire pathology that that relationship was linked to. Do you understand what I just said? The pathology that that relationship was linked to. A lot of you are in relationships that are just a reflection of your pathology that you're trying to better understand. It's not really a reflection of your true authentic institution of sex, love, and relationship. And the reason why I'm not talking about money, because if this is about money, you guys are down and out and wallowing in self-pity isn't going to get you paid. Okay. If you experienced a loss, money is signature. Go seek that energy signature again. You know how many times I've been robbed, stained? Yo. Yeah, you got that's sometimes like you just sometimes you just have to get up and go and fucking make some more. Okay? It's not that you allow people to do you wrong because they all anybody who robbed from me got their karma for that. But it was also because I didn't dwell on it. I kept moving. I had faith that God had more abundance for me and whatever was taken from me would be offered to me tenfold. And it was. So I don't really get money off of this. And if it is, it's just about you getting back on the fucking saddle. Seeing yourself as more wealthy and abundant as you ever have been. Some of you are dwelling about some kind of loss or about not having enough money for something. And instead of wallowing in self-pity, you need to look at how you can change that. But yeah, I'm more getting like this like personal ascension and development and some of you are getting your heart chakras cracked open because this cycle needs to complete because the divine needs you. I hear, I hear the divine telling you, God needs you over here, we gotta go. And you're like, I can't. I don't want to, I feel like this. And the divine's like, no, 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 seriously, you don't understand. We got to go. There's destined and fated events that are in store. We got to go. We can't, we can't wait here. And you're just sitting there. They're going to crack you, man. I did a reading for cancer a couple of months ago and cancer was holding on to something. And I literally saw the divine, like they had to evacuate the beach. And I seen cancer as a crab holding on to some fucking piece of bamboo for the life of it. And I literally saw an angel come, take, take cancer's claw and crack it and throw it in the water. And the salt water rejuvenated the, the claw. So if the divine breaks you, the divine will fix and repair. If the divine takes from you, the divine will reinstill and give back whatever it took tenfold. Don't, you have to trust the process. Some of you are needing to trust the process and this is lack of faith about the process. This is you going to the divine and saying, you don't understand how I feel. You're punishing me. You hate me. Some of you think God hates you because of certain things that you're going through. And it's because you lack the vision. And what's stopping you from lacking the vision are your emotions. These negative emotions that stop you from seeing the reality. So for me, because there's no swords and there's no pentacles except for this. There's no swords here. So mentally, I'm getting the impression that there's you're stable. You know logically, you know logically enough about your spirituality, about what's happening. But feeling this is a different story. Some of you aren't so um, clear or controlled about the emotions, which is why you suppress them for so long. Because suppressing your emotions allowed you to feel in control. But you weren't in control of emotions. You were oblivious two emotions. There's a difference. Ignorance is bliss. She could be sitting there like that because she's knowledgeable and powerful. Or she can be sitting like that because she's a fucking idiot. Okay. And she's out to lunch. Right. <laughs> I don't know why it's coming out so spicy. I think that's just personally what I'm, you know, just the energy that I'm in. But let's see more. We want more. We want more. Yeah. Some of you are some of you have an energy signature of a lot of wealth and abundance and you're looking at your circumstances and you're struggling because you're looking around and saying the abundance that I see and feel inside me is not reflected around me. Good. I'm happy you acknowledge that because that needs to be addressed. That means you have to unlock that abundance, take that abundance and put it to market. There are certain abilities visions that you've gotten that will uncover. It's like a scavenger hunt, like a treasure hunt, right? Here's the clues that will get you to the bag. Yeah, 
some of you are meant to be very wealthy and you're just not wealthy right now and you have to figure out why you see yourself that way. There's a lot of people who don't see themselves as wealthy. Everybody wants to be rich, but not everybody sees themselves as rich. It's only the people who see themselves as wealthy that will chase that energy signature because they're trying to find themselves. Okay? There's a difference between being rich and being wealthy, and I know you guys know that, all right? There's a lot of rich people that, that um, don't have any intelligence to utilize wealth properly. They just use their wealth to convince people that they're better than them, and they're not because they don't even utilize their riches properly. They don't know how to convert their riches into wealth. Wealth is the 10 of pentacles. It's the shit that lasts. It's compounding finances. Okay, it's investments, it's, it's long money, right? It's money that will feed your kids, kids, kids because you handled it right in your lifetime. You weren't only thinking about yourself. You weren't trying to use that money to gain control over people, oppress people, right? Make them feel less than. You used your abundance. You're going to use, this is what this, is, this energy is teaching you guys, some of you with regards to money and finances that are in a tough spot. It's going to teach you to look at money differently. It's almost like there's certain people that come around celebrities and they don't get phased. There's certain people that come around big money and they don't get phased even though they're from the hood. They come from nothing because many lifetimes they've lived very wealthy. So the energy signature of wealth and money and abundance doesn't phase them. It's no different than people getting scared about love. Some people's capacity for love is so big that they will run from these people. And the, then the people go, well, why don't they love me? Well, because your love is way too much for this person to fucking fathom because their capacity of love looks more like a shot glass compared to your big chalice you have did it. I keep getting the king of pentacles. Yeah, this is, these are the fears about being abundant. There's certain things, it's it's illusions. Yeah, 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 this is what I'm saying about what you're emotionally purging. It is, the divine knows what it's doing with you. The divine knows it has to purge these fucking emotions because this isn't just about exploration of the world and relationship, AKA sex outside. Summer's coming, sex outside, jeez. <laughs> I'm just joking guys, don't get locked up. They will lock you up for sex outside. It's like indecent exposure and shit like that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> the divine knows what they're doing with you because they know that these fucking negative emotions are stopping you from exploring the world, okay? Moving forward, meaning there's already certain actions that you could take to move forward. It's just emotionally, you don't, you're, you're feeling conflicted because there's too many fears about it not working out, about you not being able to move forward, about you, something bad happening to you. Like, it, it's just all of this, like, illusions, these fears, you see the hooded man, like he's not seeing shit clear. He's just feeling, right? Yeah. And, and, and whatever emotions that are purging out, it's going to positively impact your money because you will love yourself. You will be emotionally available to yourself again. That means you'll be able to encourage yourself and say things like, no, we can do it. This is for us. We're meant for greatness. We're me meant for wealth, health, all of that. You're not loving yourself enough to be compassionate, to give yourself that kind of reassurance, which is why some of you aren't looking to the future and you're wallowing in the now and in the past and, and, and lacking optimism about how it can be better, different. And that's what this successful completion is about. And quite frankly, I don't think you have to do anything other than be open to the fucking heart chakra awakening that is occurring in some of you guys right now. It is gnarly. Some of you guys, it is fucking gnarly. I felt this, I could feel it in my hand. Some of you guys are literally on the floor. I can see you like against walls like this in your room. I, I see some of, I see one of you saying bye to people. You have guests at your house. Some of you, because some of you are still trying to play this facade, like everything's okay. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, this is you. So I see some of you letting people out of your house, telling people bye, shutting the door and literally falling on the floor and crying. This is what I mean. Some of you have been sitting on emotions that are becoming, they're, they're, they're bubbling over. It's unsustainable going through life, ignoring yourself like this, not giving yourself the love, the compassion, 
okay? Not purging the shit out. Tears are toxins. Anything you purge out, tears, sweat, piss, shit, puke, these are all toxins, ways of purging out toxins. That's why tears are salty. It's actually purging out some shit, you know, trying to cleanse. You know what I mean? I, I honestly think like salt comes out of tears so that when you cry those toxic chemicals out of your eyes, the salt, it, 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 the salt makes it so it doesn't negatively impact your face. <laughs> that makes any sense. Because I truly believe tears are toxins. Why would tears be any different than sweat, which also is salty? I don't know about urine and shit, but you know, it's it's a toxin. It's purging out. Some of you guys are about to purge some dirt, some because you because I see you guys like not at the, at the brim. You're at the brim. I see you looking at some of you like, yeah, and you're trying. You're shaking. You're trying to compose. Some of you couldn't wait till somebody or a group of people left your house so that you could cry. This has to happen. So I don't see you needing to do anything because when once this gets purged, whatever you want to do, you ain't going to go to tarot to try to figure it out. You're going to have that knowing and you're going to be super stoked and you might come to tarot after you did what you did to see if it's going to work out, right? But you won't need any directive on this because your shadow and light, your higher self and shadow will be on the same page. Your feminine and masculine would have been balanced and you're going to be able to move forward. You're, that's an internal knowing. This is what you are missing is this internal knowing that allows you to move forward. And it looks like that knowing comes in after you purge all of these negative emotions that get you to doubt what you already know. That's such a little, because I was reading this in one of the dailies and I don't know why I was getting sex outside. And I mean, I know why, but like for the message, right? And then I pulled this card, I'm like, Sex outside! Sex outside! <laughs> okay. Shout out to Scarborough Bluffs. Bomb, bomb, bomb. <laughs> Straight up. Medea. All right. Let me not do it. Let me not do it. Let me not. Be nice, Destiny. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking in my head because just a lot going on, guys. But I'm sure, you know, What's new? You guys are going through it too, you know? If the reading doesn't resonate, talk about the energies that you are subject to, that you are dealing with. Here is the successful completion of this karmic cycle. It's done. This might be a hard couple of weeks. And, it's, and if it is, it's only because this is getting squeezed. Some of you are getting squeezed. All the and you're gonna be squeezed and you're gonna cry. Some of you are gonna cry so hard you're gonna puke. You're gonna puke. It has to come out. Some of you have been sitting on toxicity from time. It's negatively impacted everything. Everything. No wonder why you couldn't move forward. Because look, look at you. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> That's how I say. I go to. And then go to Florida. Look at you. Oh, look at you. Oh, my chachi. <laughs> but look at you, really. You've got the sun and the moon. What happens in the dark comes to light. The dark parts of you need your light. There are parts of you that you didn't get to know about yourself because you were too afraid to explore those parts of yourself. And the divine is making it unavoidable. They're taking your hand, they're going down in the pits of you and they're telling you it's not, don't be afraid, let's go. And there you are. The divine is just coming to show you this. It's not even that scary. The divine is just trying to show you this part of you that you've been avoiding, trying to act, isn't, trying to act like isn't hurting, isn't in pain, isn't scared, isn't confused. Finds like, no, we got to go deal with this. Let's go. It'll be all worth it. It'll be all worth it. The end of this karmic cycle. Some of you guys, I can, I feel pride, excitement for you. Because when you get into this energy, Shit, I got distracted. Shit! 
have to say something to you people, man. Anyways, this forward, yeah, this forward movement is a big deal because of this. You go from here to here, and it's not going to be easy. You guys are going to go into a very dark night. If you're not, if you're in it already, just ride the wave, friend. Just ride the wave. Okay? Our ancestors poured rivers of blood for us. The least we can do is shed rivers of tears for them. Angel gang gang. Just go down there. Okay, let's go into clarification. I see you guys plummeting forward in the next, by spring. I've been reading for a collective that is tapped into, is um, aligned with the ecosystem. So everything from the moon cycles, you guys are literally purging emotions at the full moons, purging them until the new moons and then feeling rejuvenated in the full moons. But a lot of you guys are actually so in alignment since that 1111 portal, that was an opportunity to get into alignment with the seasons. So a lot of you assumed the death position along with fall, which was perfect. You literally died with the seasons. So the, the environment, the, 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 the environment is supporting your transformation and metamorphosis. When you become in line with your ecosystem, your ecosystem supports you. So some of you have been supported in the death process along with fall. Mother Nature being like, we're doing it with you, you know? You guys were dying with the leaves, with the trees. That was perfect. Then you've been in winter during the Bordeaux. A lot of you have been in the healing process. Some of you guys did this exact last year, and there's a whole other scene playing out because I can see that too, right? Where for others of you, timing is an illusion. It doesn't even matter. But anyways, that Bordeaux, that healing phase that you guys have been in over winter, you bunkered down. A lot of you guys focused on your pentacles. A lot of you guys focused on your independence. A lot of you guys focused on whether you wanted to or not, this healing. Um, you, 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 you successfully wrapped up these cycles. And I see you guys, I see you guys butting up. I keep getting visions of everything that's happening under the ground right now because spring's coming. So it doesn't even matter what you see on the ground underneath. Everything is starting to work its way up to the surface. You guys are purging anything, stopping your seeds from budding up to the surface. Because for some of you, this was the lack of tears. You weren't even watering your fucking seeds. No wonder why nothing was sprouting. Some of you are going to cry so fucking hard. And you're going to look and everything around you has budded. Your tears did that. Your tears watered your soils so that your future could grow. Without your tears, nothing was growing. You needed to let it out. There was a better place for it, a better purpose for that. I don't know. All right. And then it starts getting kind of weird. And I'm like, I'm like okay, okay, we got to wrap it up. We got to wrap it up. We got we got a lot to do, okay? All right, thank you, Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, guardian angels for this beautiful spread. Actually, I'm not even going to read the Oracle E. I'm going to go all in. This is about the change in trajectory about your future. This is what the chariot says. All in. I heard all aboard. Some of you are moving, going somewhere, leaving, traveling. This is two cards about travel exploration, relocation, right? So as a lot of you are going on new adventures, new journeys, new trips, some of you guys are all in, some of you are putting the money down for a vacation, a trip, an excursion, you are, you are taking the action that you need to, to do what it is that you feel destined and fated to do. And for some of you, it's going on an adventure, an excursion of some kind. And you have the money, but you just didn't put it down. 
And now you're realizing it was a poverty consciousness that saw, that made you think you didn't have enough. And instead, you're grateful and thank God for having enough to be even able to do shit like this, whatever this is. So you're all in. Put the abundance down. Um, but I want to read from the... Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Miss Crixie. Miss Crixie. <laughs> <laughs> Those are assholes. Oh, there's still a little there's still a little coal. Thank you, Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, guardian angels, for my beautiful Gemini's. Can you please clarify this spread? The maiden. I'll read this for you guys. V3. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. Okay, so I did um a weekly love reading yesterday and I kept getting like a virgin touch for the very first time. Now I'm reading this and the first thing is the virgin, the princess, and the innocent. What the fuck? I'm not a virgin. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Okay, but I'm not, all right? Um, but this is cool. Okay, let's see. The maiden archetype is the epitome of innocent arousal, naive sensuality, oh, that I've been, and precarious purity. She is compelling and addictive because her flawless and youthful glow. She's the first archetype in the trifecta of maiden, mother, and crone, and rightfully so because she has oh so much to learn. The maiden is perfectly positioned for trouble to come her way and subject her to a challenge that leads to the next phase of her womanhood. She must grow up, yet hesitates at the threshold. Enamored by the charms of youth, the maiden represents the side of us that is riveted and curious, drawn to shadowy forests, dark nights, and taking just one taste of the poisonous fruit. Her magic is edgy and includes both shame and delight. Let yourself fall down the rabbit hole, young one. When light, curious, enchanting, sensual, full of vitality, and when dark, pretends, projects, denies, and fantasizes. Goes deeper, press phone, Alice, or any princess forgives. Do you long to be rescued by another or receive a kiss that brings you back to life? Be weary of want waiting for a prince. Break the spell and, and of your own life. Moving from the maiden to the mother is challenging, often leaving unresolved tensions between the two archetypes for years. If one, if not, a lifetime. I am getting some familial shit. Some of you with the whole mother, that, that, that blockage. Some of you, it's it's about your relationship with your mother and how your mother might have always made you feel. Okay, and it's actually negatively impacting you going from the maiden to the mother energy because of your own dynamic with your mother that has been maybe estranged or toxic or turbulent for many, many years. Maybe you didn't get the compassion and the nurturing from your mother and you resent her because now you go out into the world and you don't know how to be compassionate and nurturing to other people. And you're now old enough to say, oh, it's because I wasn't raised this way. You need to take, transmute that pain into power. Don't blame. You can't blame your mother for not giving you the love she didn't have. This is what we're doing for the bloodline, guys. Okay? So, yeah. Some of you, this maiden energy is just about, you know, having a little fun, enjoying yourself. All right. And again, this is about moving forward in adventure. Because think about the maiden. If the maiden has been burnt, it's like uh, once, uh, uh, bit one, uh, once, twice shy, I forget that saying. I'm getting all these sayings that I don't remember or I don't even know how to say because I don't know them, but I'm, I'm trying to download them. Um, you're going to be a little bit, uh, you're going to pussyfoot around 
doing it again. So some of you um, are being asked to get back on the saddle. Don't be afraid. Give it another go. I'm not talking about some toxic relationship. I'm talking about your life, your future. Like I said, some of you stopped looking to the future because of what you had gone through. You were just focusing on the past. And if you did look to the future, there was some kind of pain that created an illusion that the past would be projected into the future and you had no say about that. So it got you to stop looking to the future. You're healing all of that, maidens. Okay. And when you do heal all this shit, because this is, this, this is the maiden energy to me after the maiden got burnt in that dark forest. But essentially, this experience gets you to be the mother. So I told you, a lot of what you guys need right now is the love. You to be emotionally available to yourself in the ways that you wish people would be emotionally available to you and didn't understand why they weren't. For all the reasons why you weren't emotionally available to yourself. <laughs> I love you guys, okay? Um, like, share, subscribe, personal readings, email me at queencuptera at gmail.com, daily, weekly content, Patreon forward slash queen cup. And until the next time I see you guys, please continue to let your inner angels live. Yeah. Okay. Mwah, mwah. Arrivederci.